Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. Now today's video is all about the gift boxes at the Dollar Tree. I love to use the different styles and shapes of these hard sided boxes and transform them into amazing decor pieces for my home. Now I will be sharing some of my top fan favorites today to get you all inspired to create these as well. So grab some of these on your next trip out so we can get started to create some amazing decor pieces that are sure to impress. Now this project is a set of decorative storage containers. Now we're going to need two of these round gift boxes from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to need some of this gray and white contact paper from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to grab the paper and the boxes and go ahead and remove those lids. We'll set those to the side and work on those later. So we're going to start with the boxes and I'm going to be using this gray and white contact paper. Now I think Dollar Tree has really stepped up their game in their <laughs> contact paper variety and style. This one was really cute so I had to get it. So I'm just going to cut a strip at least an inch wide taller than each one of my containers and I'm going to do that for the taller container and the shorter container. You want to make sure, it, like I said, it's at least an inch taller. So now what I'm going to do is take one of the containers, remove the contact paper from the backing, and I'm going to start applying it to the container, making sure that it's overlapping the top and bottom edges. Now a good guide to start this is on the existing seam of your container, and just start applying it a couple inches at a time, making sure it's nice and smooth, free of wrinkles and bubbles as you go. So once you reach the end, you want to smooth everything out and you'll see there's a little edge overlapping the top and the bottom and this is exactly what you want your project to look like. So what I want to do now is I'm taking my utility knife and I'm cutting a little slits along that overlapped portion. This will help you fold that piece to the inside of the container without any wrinkles. This will have the pieces overlap. They'll go down nice and smooth. And if you do it in sections instead of one solid piece, you'll find it so much easier to work with. Now here is the top edge all nice and folded in. You'll see how clean that looks. And we're going to repeat this process and we're going to do this along the bottom as well, cutting those little slits all the way around and folding that in as well. Now here is that bottom edge all nice and folded in. Now even though this looks really neat, I do want to cover up that barcode on the bottom to give it a professional finish. So I'm going to cover it up with some of this thick craft paper. Now I'm just going to take my hot glue, I'm going to run it along the edge of the round box first and then fill in the center with a little bit, press it down on that craft paper and once it's nice and bonded, just go around it with your utility blade to go ahead and trim off all of that excess craft paper. And once you're done trimming, this is what it looks like. So clean and professional. I just love how this looks. And now we're going to repeat the same process with your other containers. Now here are both of my containers all trimmed out with the contact paper. The bottoms are nice and clean. And this is what they look like. So yes, these do turn out really good. So now grab the lids. Now originally I wanted to use that same contact paper for the lids, but I decided to go with a contrast. So I'm using some of this lighter wood grain paper, contact paper from the Dollar Tree. Now to cover these, we're kind of going to use that same concept we did for the containers. What I'm going to do is I am going to cut a strip wider than the lid and we're just going to cut a square that's going to be wider on all four sides of the lid for each one of the lids of our containers. Now we're going to remove uh, the contact paper from the backing, put it on the top of the containers and smooth it out. Now keep, keep in mind if you have glitter on your containers, you kind of want to sand that off in the beginning. So now what I'm doing is I'm trimming down around the lid. I want to make sure I have about a at least a quarter of an inch of an overlap around the edge. Now we're going to take our utility blade and you guessed it, we're going to cut those little slit notches in there and then fold that down along the natural crease of the top of the lid. It doesn't have to cover the sides because we are going to do another strip to cover that. So here is the top of the lid all covered. 
So now what I want to do is take that same wood grain contact paper again and I am going to cut a strip. Now this will cover the side of the container. You want to make sure you use a ruler for this because you want that edge to be nice and straight. Now I did cut this uh, strip at least double the width of the edge trim and I'm just going to carefully apply it along making sure the straight edge is along the top of the lid and you'll have overlap at the open side of the lid as shown here. And then once that's nice and done, go ahead and take your utility blade, go ahead and cut all your little slits and notches around the edge. And then once that's done all the way around, just fold those in one by one, making sure they're pressed firmly into place. This makes your project look so very neat and high end. So here's one of my lids, it's all trimmed out. It almost looks like one continuous piece, but doing it in these pieces and doing a test fit, you can see it looks very clean and professional. And now I'm just going to repeat the same thing for the other lid and you have a beautiful two piece set. Now originally this was my plan to have these look like this, but I'm going to remove the lids because I decided to take it up a step further. Now what I'm going to do is I decided to add knobs to the center of my lids. Now in my stash, I have these glass knobs that I got from Amazon a while back. And I think in bulk, they came out to less than a dollar a piece. Now you could also pick these up from the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has a variety of different glass knobs as well that you could use if you do not want to purchase these on Amazon. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just visually find the center of each one of these lids and I'm going to go ahead and mark the center with a dot with my Sharpie. Now once that's done, we can um, add our knobs. Now if you just want to hot glue these on, that would be fine. but. I wanted mine to be extra secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these screws that came with these knobs. And in order to apply this, we need to have a hole in the center. Now you don't really need to use a drill for this since this is just cardboard. What we're going to do is I'm just using a nail. So I'm poking a nail through it and I'm just kind of wiggling it around. So that hole is wide enough to stick a screw through. Now I'm going to flip it over to the inside, work that nail in again, and then push that little screw right through the hole. Now once it's already poking through, you just want to go ahead and grab your knob and just screw it on top of there and you help with your screwdriver to make sure it's nice and tight. You want to do this for both of your lids and now you have your knobs applied. Now you can just add these to the top of your containers to have a really beautiful decorative container with a little bit of sassy bling at the top. And here you have it, a set of beautiful containers that you can make super easy. Now I really love the combination of the pattern with the wood and the contact paper. It looks like something you would definitely purchase in a retail store. And those glass knobs look really great on these as well. And you're ready to decorate and display these in your space. Let me know what you would store in these cute little containers. Now this project is a decorative planter on stands. We're going to need some of these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. And one of these Halloween treat boxes from the Dollar Tree. Now we're going to start with the Halloween box and what we want to do is sand off any glitter. So if your box doesn't have glitter, I wouldn't worry about it, but mine did. And I just want to sand it until it's nice and smooth. Now once it's smooth, I'm going to go in and put two coats of this Krylon black spray paint and it's this flat or you can use an acrylic paint as well. Now while that dries, we're going to go ahead and start working on our tumbling tower blocks. So you want to grab a carpenter square as well. Now the first set of blocks we'll be joining together are sets of three and we're going to make two sets of three. Now you could use some wood glue for these or you can use a wood hot glue. It's all up to you. Now for this project, I am using wood glue because I want this to be super sturdy since it will be supporting our planter box. And I'm just going to join them end to end as shown here. Now once you have your first one, go ahead and make two. Now the next set of blocks we'll be joining together are sets of four and these will be end to end as well. We're going to join them together the same way we did our three block sets, again using the wood glue. 
Then what I did is double the recipe, so I'll make two frames out of each one of the sets. So now I'm just going to grab my four block set and my three block set and I want to start to join the frame together. Now the four block sets will be on the long side so I'm going to take a three block set and join it at the end and your blocks will be laying flat not up on their side. So I'm going to grab another three block set I'm going to put it at the opposite end of the other block, three block set that you placed. And once that's glued into place we can close up that open end with a four block set. Now once you put this in place, this will form your square stand and you want to allow this to completely dry. Now you're going to use your other four pieces to make a second square. Now once they're all dry, what we can do is get ready to paint these. Now for this project, I decided to use this metallic gold acrylic paint or you can use gold spray paint if you like. So I'm just going to add some of that gold spray paint down there, I mean acrylic paint, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying it on the inside of the frames first and then I'll do the outside. Now once I do the inside and outside, then I can paint the top of the frame and allow it to dry and then you can flip it over and paint the other side as well. Now you do want to do this for both of the frames and allow them to dry thoroughly. And now that all of our pieces are now dry, we can start assembling our planter holder. Now we're going to place each frame on top of that Halloween treat box. We want to align the top of the treat box with the top of the frame, noting that the three block set is at the top of the box. So I'm just going to add a line of my wood stick hot glue along the top and about halfway down the sides of each side of the box and then press that frame into place just making sure that top um, edge of the box is even with the top edge of the uh, blocks as shown here. Now once that one side is done just add the other frame to the other side. And here are both of the frames as applied to that Halloween box and I think that it looks awesome. So now all you have to do is decorate. And here it is. I just added some greenery and filler and I placed it on a display. Now I love the simplicity of this piece and how the colors and style really give it a sophisticated look. Now I really do think this gold paint really looks great in this piece and it reminds me of metal framing. And these little tree containers are so fun and versatile to craft with. Now you all have to let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. This project is a decorative tile farmhouse box. We're going to need one large gift box of any design from the Dollar Tree. We're going to need one peel and stick tile in the blue and white from the Dollar Tree. And we'll need this optional farmer's market stencil also from the Dollar Tree. We're going to start off with the box for this project and what I want to do is remove the lid and I'm going to take it outside and give it a couple of coats of this Zitzer 123 primer and then finish off with a white spray paint. Now once that sat out and had a chance to dry, here is your box ready to go. Go ahead and grab those tiles. We're going to remove those from the package and here's what it looks like and my original idea was to cover two sides of the box with this tile. So what I intend to do is to cut this in half and I'm just using my utility blade and a ruler to cut it down evenly in the center. And then I'm going to cut that tile in half. So now we have two individual tiles. So we're going to grab our box and I'm going to place one of the tiles on top for a test fit. Now immediately I knew that it was much too large for this larger box that I had. So I'll have to make some adjustments to my design. So what I decided to do is actually cut out that center part of the tile. Now I'm just going to do this with regular scissors and I'm cutting just barely an eighth of an inch outside of that original center design. Now here is one of them. I'm going to do a test fit to see it'll fit like a cross or an X on the side of the box which is perfect so I decided to go ahead and repeat this for the other one and now I have the two 
Now I loved it so much, I just went ahead and decided to do a third one and just left one blank side to try out the stencil later. So I'm gonna cut this one out as well. So now I have all three of my decorative tile pieces and I'm going to um, start applying them to the box. But before we do that, I noticed I still love that corner piece, but it was too large for the design. So what I'm gonna do is take this larger part of the flower and I am gonna cut just that flower portion off. Now I am gonna need to cover this on three sides of the box, which will mean I need 12 of these little flowers to go with this design. Now I've cut uh, 12 of them out of those corners and I'm just gonna start applying them to the box. So we're gonna start with the larger piece and I'm just using my hot glue and I'm quickly going to apply that hot glue in the shape on the back of the first tile. And I am gonna put these on as an X pattern and then I'm gonna apply all those little corner pieces on there. Now I'm gonna sit those on there to make sure they're nice and aligned first and then I'm gonna follow up with hot glue to secure those in place. Now here is everything all secure. I really love how this is looking. So I'm gonna repeat this for the two connecting sides. And now I have all three sides that I want covered with the tile decoration. And I left one blank because I wanted um, to try out the stencil, but you can add another tile if you like. Now here's the stencil I'm gonna try out. It's a farmer's market stencil that I got from the Dollar Tree. I haven't tried their stencils yet, so this will be a first for me. So I wanted to give it a try because this stencil was super cute. So I laid it on top and I did notice it was larger than the box, so it did overlap and kind of bubble up where I wouldn't get a secure fit. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting down the corners of the stencil so I'll have some area on the actual surface of the box to tape it down and secure it nice and flat. Now once it's nice and secure, we can go in with our color and I'm using an Admiral Blue color from Apple Barrel. I love this color. And I'm just gonna use one of these little tiny chip brushes from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm doing is I'm just dry dabbing it on, just the smallest bit of paint. You really don't wanna do this with wet, wet paint. It's kind of almost like a dry brushing, but I'm gonna just dab that color on, on all of those areas. Here's Here it is all covered, I let it sit for about a minute or two and then carefully peeled up the stencil. I was so impressed on how well it turned out. Here's what it looks like. It says farmer's market, local and fresh with a little rooster in the middle. I think it's super cute. So we have that on one side and we have our tiles on the other. So now you can decorate in peace. And here it is, you guys. All I did was place a small plant inside and I have it on display. Now, I really love how cute this tile looks in this pattern and it really reminds me of a ceramic box. Now, it's just those little small details that make all of the difference and give it a really high-end look. Now this towel comes in different colors, including silver, so the possibilities are endless. And then for a different look, rotate it around to reveal the cute farmer's market design. I do have to say, this stencil turned out better than I expected. It was very easy to clean after using too. Now this project is a faux metal planter with hooks. We're gonna need one of these large hard side gift boxes from the Dollar Tree. Now these are available in all seasons as well as in the birthday and holiday and party aisle. Now I'm also gonna need some over the door racks from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna need one of these. Now we're gonna start off with our box and we need to cut this to shape. So I'm gonna cut this down about two and a quarter inches on one side of the box. So I'm just gonna use my ruler and I'm just gonna make a line there so I'll know where I'm going to be cutting it and making sure that line overlaps the edge so you could see it from the side. So now what I'm going to do is cut an angle cut from the top of the back of the box down to the two and a, half, a quarter inch line that we just marked. That'll make our slant cut for the sides and we're going to do this for both sides. 
Now once you do that, in order to get a nice straight cut, what I like to do is take my ruler, I'll clamp it in place, and then I'll use my utility blade just to score it a few times. You want to make sure your fingers are definitely out of the way for this. Definitely be careful. So once you have that score line, all you have to do is run your blade across that score line just a few times, and it should be able to detach the side in a form like this wing here. And we're going to do this on both sides. So now all we have to do is cut across the front. Again, I'm going to clamp my ruler down in the front, run my utility blade along that ruler a few times just to get that little score mark. And once you have your score mark, you just run your blade back across there and it should come right off. And here is your slant cut for the front of your box. Now sometimes the box can cut can be kind of rough depending on the box. So just run over it with a little bit of sandpaper and that should resolve any issues. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab our over the door hanger. Now we're gonna need two of these hooks on the over door hanger. So I'm just gonna clip off the last two hooks together as shown here. Now what I'm gonna do is clip off any overage on these little pieces on the side. And I'm also going to clip and bend back and forth this little hook part and snap that off because we won't need that for our project. So I'm reshaping the hooks to make sure they are the right size. And this is what we'll be using for the hooks at the bottom of our box. Now we're going to be attaching this to the back of the box so we can add hangers, so we can hang little trinkets or whatever we like. So once you decide where you want to place it, I am just going to be using my wood hot glue for this. Now you can definitely use E6000 or Gorilla Glue or whatever strong type of adhesive that you like, but I did find that the wood hot glue worked perfect for my project today. So once you adhere and get that basic adhesion, you're going to go around all of the edges with more of that hot glue. This just adds an additional seal there. And keeps it nice in place so it is secure and will be able to hold anything that you place on your hooks. And here it is all nice and sealed in. So what we're going to do is to let this sit a few minutes and let that glue solidify. Now I do think this box is really cute just the way it is. I love this design this year, really cute. But what we're going to do is once that's nice and secure, I am going to be painting my box. So what I'm going to do is to take some of my Zenser 123 primer. I am going to give a couple of coats of primer on there. And of course you can use chalk paint if you like. And also acrylic paint. So here's my couple of coats of Zenser 123 primer all over my boss and you can see that the coverage is really good with this. Now what I decided to do with my box is to give it kind of a galvanized look. So to do this, I'm gonna use a couple of different paints. I'm gonna use three different acrylic paints in gray. I'm gonna use this dark pavement acrylic uh, paint here. I'm gonna use elephant gray acrylic paint and also a silver acrylic, acrylic paint. This is a Martha Stewart one I got on clearance, but you can use any silver that you have on hand. So the color we're going to start with is the dark gray. You want to work from dark to light when making this little galvanized look. So I, you could use a makeup sponge or anything to dab it, but I love to use a paintbrush as well. So I'm just going to load up that paint on the tip of the paintbrush and just start dabbing the different shapes on the um, cover of the box. You want to do this on all the sides that are exposed, the front, the back, the bottom, and inside. Now note that on the inside, it did only go down half way since only half of it will be exposed in any of my projects. So while that's still wet, we are going to go right in with our elephant gray, again taking that same paint brush and then just dabbing that all over the box as well. My main focus is to get that gray into the white areas, but it's definitely okay to overlap some of those darker gray areas. This causes a better blending. And once you do that all over the box, this is the result, you guys. It's getting close to our galvanized look. Now let this sit to completely dry. Now that it's dry, we are going to take our silver and go in with that. So I'm just taking a smaller paintbrush here and I'm just going to dab this silver all over the side. Now we're going to work at one side at a time because once we dab this on, we're going to let it sit just a few seconds and then go in with a wet paintbrush. Now what this does is it actually helps to blend in that silver and kind of soften the look to make it look like real metal. So you just want to go over this, make sure your brush is kind of really damp and then finish it off going in one nice direction to give you the best look and finish. 
and here is one side of the box it looks really good and I'm happy with it so we're gonna repeat this process all the way around the box and here is the final result all over the box with your galvanized metal look so now it's now that it's dry what we're going to do is we are going to work on the bottom of it and we want to do the hooks so I'm taking some black acrylic paint and what I want to do is just to paint those hooks black now I waited to paint these black for uh, last because I knew that it would be spray painted so I wanted to make sure that the black was the last finish and you want to give two nice coats of the black and let them dry and here is what it looks like so now what I wanted to do is add some little accents. Have you ever seen those metal containers with the little slots in them? What I did is I went to my Cricut machine and I cut out some slots a quarter inch high by one and a quarter inch long. Now if you don't have a Cricut, you don't need one. You could just cut strips at a quarter of an inch and cut little pieces an um, inch and a quarter long for this same effect. You don't need a Cricut machine or cutting machine to do this. And the Dollar Tree has vinyl that you could use. So what I'm doing on the front of my box is I am marking some lines about an inch apart starting at about three quarters of an inch down from the top and I want to start applying those little slit um, pieces, those slot pieces. So I'm just going to apply them. I'm going to start by applying three across the top and I'm just eyeballing it but I'm spacing these about an inch apart going across. And then the next row, you definitely want to offset it to give it the authentic slit look. This is what the front looks like. And we're going to repeat this for the sides, just carrying on that same design using the guide that you made on the front of the box and just carrying it over to the sides of the box. Now here are both sides and the front all done. And I'm loving how good this looks. Now for the back, what we're going to do to hang it is use some of this grow grain ribbon. Now this is some grow grain ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's about three quarters of an inch wide. Now what I want to do with this is I'm going to apply a generous amount of glue on each end of that grow grain ribbon, about an inch and a half long, because we only want an opening in the middle about maybe an inch and a half. We want this to fit very tight. So once we get the glue on the ribbon, go ahead and flip it over and apply it to the back about maybe three quarters of an inch down from the top and then make sure it's stretched really tight you only want to be able to fit just one finger under there because this will hang it close to the wall and keep it from leaning forward so here is what it looks like all done and now we can decorate and here is our faux galvanized box decor with some beautiful fall foliage now I do love the finish of this box and this slotted look really gives it a unique look now this is so super sweet, but you can also use a neutral style with greenery. Now for this one, I added an Ikea plant and tassel beads, and I love this look so much. Now you can add some flowers. You could use this for mail, for trinkets, anything that you really love. Now the possibilities are endless for this, but I couldn't leave without making a quick holiday version too. Now I do love the versatility of this piece and it's so fun and easy to make. Now I love these little ornaments, but don't forget to use those hooks to hang decor, keys, or anything that you love. I hope that you give this easy project a try. I really hope that you all are enjoying these crafts so far, but I wanted to pop in really quick and let you all know that you could follow me on all of these platforms as She So Craft DEE. -E. So now let's jump right into that next DIY. Now this project is a pair of enamel look planter boxes. We're going to need two of these gift boxes from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need a pack of these wood rings from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to need some bamboo skewers and you can get these from Walmart or the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to be using some half wood beads and I got these from Amazon but you can actually cut wood beads in half as well. 
So we're gonna start off with those little boxes and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be painting these. So if your box has some glittery accents, just take some fine grit sandpaper and sand off all of those glitter accents first. Now once all the glitter is removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove that little um, handle ribbon that they have on there. That just should just poke right back through the hole and come right out. We're gonna remove that from both of the boxes. Now once everything is wiped clean, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of this Zinsser 123 primer to cover up all of the artwork on the outside of the box. And then I'm going to follow up with some Krylon white spray paint. Now of course you can use chalk paint or acrylic paint, whatever you like to finish off the outside of your boxes. So while those are drying, we're gonna go ahead and grab all of our wood rings. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna make wheels out of these. Now, this comes in a package of six, and we know we need four wheels for one, and we'll have two for the other, but I do have a little hack at the end to resolve that issue. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our skewers as well and some of our half beads. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting my skewers down. Now the first skewer that will go on here, we're going to put right down the center of that bamboo ring. So once you cut it to size, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a dot of hot glue on each side and then place it right down the center of that bamboo ring. We just wanna make sure that's nice and centered perfectly. And then take your ring, put it on this, put it the face side down where the bamboo is facing the mat. Add a dot of hot glue in the center and then add one of those little half beads. Now I did get these from Amazon, but I do show you how to cut these as well in a demo. And I will link that in the upper right hand corner of this video as well and in the description box. Now the next step is just to cut two small pieces to put um, across the center to form a cross. And these are the kind of spokes for the tire. And we're gonna add one on each side of that bead and that little wood bamboo ring. So a little dollop of glue in the center, flip it over, and now we have one of our wheels. We're just gonna repeat this entire process until all six are created and let them completely cool and dry. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to be painting these. Again, I'm gonna be using my black acrylic paint and we are just gonna be applying one nice coat of that paint. Now there's a lot of little crevices on these little pieces so you do wanna make sure you get the front and the back and make sure you get in all of the creases of those little wheel pieces. And here's one all nice and painted and we're gonna repeat that until all of them are done and let them dry. Now, what I also wanted to add to one of my boxes was this little wood Hello Fall sign. This came in a multi-pack. They also had Farm Fresh and a couple other sayings on there, but I really did like the Hello Fall to fit into this DIY. So again, I'm going in with my black acrylic paint and I'm just gonna apply one nice coat to the Hello Fall wood piece. You know, you do wanna make sure you get around the outsides of this as well, just to make sure everything is nice and covered with that paint. Okay, so now that my boxes are nice and dry, here they are. Now I didn't paint the inside since they won't be seen, but you can paint the inside if you like. Now what I wanna do to the box is just give them a light uh, distress look or enamel look. I'm gonna use my craft stick method where I take a craft stick, I dip it in the paint, and I'm just dragging it along the edges just to give it a little bit of wear, kind of like that rustic enamel look. I've done this on a lot of my projects. I just love this technique. There's no rhyme or reason of how much or how little you do. You just do it until your heart is happy. And I just go around all of the creased edges. Now we're gonna do this for both of our boxes and here is what they look like. So you wanna allow these to completely dry. All right, now everything is finally dry and it's the fun part where we start assembling our little wheeled boxes. So if your boxes still have any hot glue strings on there, you wanna make sure you remove them before adhering them to the box just for a nice clean and finished look. 
Now what I decided to do is I am going to use my little wood board that I have here. And what I did is I just put one dot of hot glue on three of the tumbling tower blocks just to help me level the box out and know how far I want my wheels to be from the base of the box. And I found that the height of the tumbling tower blocks was perfect for this. So what I'm doing is I sit the box on top of those tumbling tower blocks and laid the wheels. And you see how my project is laying on the side. You can lay it um, horizontal if you're sitting down in front of it but I'm doing this so you can see it on camera so what I'm gonna do now is on each one of the wheels I'm gonna add um, a line of hot glue on the two spokes that are going across the top that will touch the box and then just the tiniest little bit in the middle you don't want to add too much because this will be seen on your project if you put too much glue so I'm just gonna press it against the box making sure the bottom of the wheel is touching the board and that that box is sitting right on top of those tumbling tower blocks and then repeat that for your other wheel on the other side. Just make sure that they're all evenly spaced apart. Now once you press those into place and they're nice and secure, this is what one side of the wheels will look like. So we're going to flip it over, set them back on top of the blocks, and we're going to do the other side as well. And now all four wheels are on the box and it's ready to go. So now we're going to grab that hello fall sign and we're just going to adhere that to the side of the box. You could put anything you want. You don't have to put anything at all. But for one side of this box, I definitely just wanted to celebrate fall. So I put hello fall on there and it fit perfectly on the size box. Now for our other box, we only have two wheels left, so we are going to just go ahead and add the two wheels to the one side of the box the same way we did as before. So now that those are added, we are going to have a balance on the back where the box will still sit upright. And I'm going to use one tumbling tower block on the back as support. Now, this is a perfect idea, especially if your box is against a wall. You won't see the back anyway. I'm just going to hot glue one block to the back edge as a balance. And then once that is secured, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to be painting this to match the rest of the box. So I'm just going to apply some white acrylic paint on there spread it evenly all over that block and then allow it to completely dry So now that the block is dry, there is your counterbalance right in the back. You won't even see it. Now, once this box is sitting on a shelf, you really don't even see the block in the back and the two wheels in the front is all that matters. So you can see it does sit evenly. You'll have your wheels on the front, the block on the back, and this completes both of the set. And now all you have to do is plant and display with these. Now, once you add your fall greenery, you are ready to display these. Now, one, I simply tied a ribbon around it and decorated both of them for fall. Now, of course, these can be decorated for any season and you could add handles or even chain them together for a train effect. And let me tell you, those little wheels are so super cute and the perfect fit. Let me know if you are going to give this easy DIY a try. Now this project is a set of modern style planters. Now I'm going to be using two of these tall gift boxes from the Dollar Tree from Christmas. And I'm also going to use some cork craft sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents. Now I'm going to start off with the taller gift box and what I want to do is just cut off that ledge where the lid goes and I'm just going to go around it scoring it a couple times with my uh, utility knife and it should come off really easy. Now for the second box, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and I wanna divide this into two gift boxes. So what I wanna do is kinda of measure up and see how tall I want my medium box and I went with about seven and a half inches. So I'm marking seven and a half inches up from the bottom of the box all the way around. And then what I'm gonna do is take some painter's tape and I'm just gonna use this to kinda of mark the cut line all the way around the box and then just cut off the excess.
Now the top half of the box will be the third smallest box. So I'm going to have to secure the lid on for the bottom of the box. Now I am going to be using some hot glue for this. So you just want to spread some hot glue around that little top section. You don't need to use quite as much as I did, but I just wanted the lid to be really secure. Now you just want to carefully slide the lid on and quickly remove any of the hot glue that oozes out of that seam. Now once everything is nice and smoothed out, you can go ahead and just grab your utility knife and we're gonna go along that seven and a half inch mark that we made earlier, going ahead and cutting that second part of the box off. And now that that's separated, you have three different boxes to use for your vase style decor. So now what I'm going to do is take it out and give it one coat of the Zinser 123 primer just to kind of disguise the little pattern on the box. Now here is that primer dry after 30 minutes and it's good to go. So now we're going to go with our finishing coat and I'm going to follow up with this fr uh, flat black spray paint by Krylon and I'm going to put on about two coats. Now once that dries, here are what all three boxes look like. Now these actually look really great as they are and you can actually style this just like this. Now what I decided to do was actually trim them out. So what I did was I took some of those Lowe's craft sticks and I went ahead and stained them beforehand and I used some early American stain. Now what I'm going to be doing with the sticks is decorating around the outside of the boxes to give them a unique accent. So for the tallest box, I'm going to take four craft sticks and I just want to just lay them out, just making sure they're spaced pretty even in between throughout the middle and then taking my pencil and marking where I want each one of those craft sticks to fall on the box. Now these pencil marks will indicate the marks that will be transferred all the way around the box so we'll know that each stick will be laying really even. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my ruler and I'm measuring all of my marks and just tracing and copying that mark all the way around on all four corners of the box so I'll know where to place all of my craft sticks. Now I've transferred all of the marks all the way around the box and everything is good to go. So now we can start adding the craft sticks. Now to make sure I get the right size of the craft stick, I'm just gonna lay it on the box. I am just gonna trace the two edges of the craft stick and trim it off. Now after you trim it off the first time, you definitely wanna check to make sure that it fits. And if there's any overage, you could just trim off any little um, excess that may be on your craft stick to make sure you get the best fit. Then just add your uh, hot glue to the back of that stick and then place it and line it up with the markings you made on your box. Now we're going to continue this all the way down the box just making sure you trace those ends and cut them off just like we did before and then gluing them into place. And you just want to make sure you don't get too close to the edge with the glue because you don't want it oozing out of the sides. Now here is one of the sides fully covered with the sticks. And now what we want to do is we're going to um, actually draw, I actually drew lines on here to help me with my placement, but this is totally optional, but I just connected the dots there. So what I did is I used those lines to make the craft sticks on the opposite sides. And now I'm going to do the other two sides with the craft sticks. And now I've put all four of the sides of the craft sticks on, and this is what one of your boxes will look like. Now you could follow up with your stain to stain all of the cut edges when you get all of your boxes covered. So the next box, which is the medium sized box, we are only gonna be putting three craft sticks on here and we're gonna be marking and spacing them just like we did before. And for the smallest box, we are gonna do two craft sticks, making sure one of those craft sticks covers the seam where we glued our top on. And here are all three of the boxes with all of the craft sticks in place and I think they look awesome. And now we can decorate. 
So here we have it. I've added some greenery bunches that I got from Ikea and I placed them on display. I love how they turned out. Now I really love the combination of the black with the wood and it really gives these gift boxes such a high-end look. Now these boxes are really thick so they can hold up well with the paint and other techniques that I use to customize, customize them. Now you can keep them grouped together or you can rearrange them separately however you wish. Now you all definitely have to let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Now this project are some Buffalo Check Decor boxes. Now we're gonna need two of these hard-sided boxes from the Dollar Tree in different sizes. We're also gonna need some Buffalo Check Vinyl from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna need some faux leather from the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna start off with the boxes today. So start off by just removing the lids. We're gonna set those to the side for now. And we are gonna go ahead and work on the boxes. Now we will be covering these, but I wanted to go ahead and put a thin rough coat of paint on these just to kind of disguise the pattern because sometimes that will show through your vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and protect my work surface and I'm gonna grab some black acrylic paint. Now I'm going to apply this all around the outside and that inner lip of the box and I'm doing just one really rough coat. It doesn't have to be pretty. We're just kind of disguising that pattern on the box so it does not show through our final vinyl application. Now we're going to do this all the way around both of the boxes. So now let's go ahead and grab those lids. Now we are going to be doing a very nice coat of the black on these lids because these will be displayed in our project. Now once we get that first coat on all of our lids, we do want to wait till it dries and follow up with a second coat. Now here are all of our pieces are dried and now here are our lids. So go ahead and sit our final lids to the side and grab that Buffalo Check vinyl. Now I love using the vinyl as contact paper in my projects and it's so much fun. So I'm gonna grab the largest box and kind of wrap it around to see how long of a piece I'm gonna need. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off of the roll. So once we have a piece long enough, I'm reverse rolling it just to kind of relieve some of that curling in the vinyl. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fold it long ways in half and then cut that entire piece in half so I'll have two long strips. Now I'm starting off with a smaller box and it's a little wide for that. So I'm cutting off just a little bit of the vinyl and then removing the backing with, and then place it on my table sticky side up. Go ahead and sit your box in the very center of that vinyl and then start wrapping it around each side. Now when you do apply this, you just wanna apply it very evenly and then apply a little pressure smoothing out any wrinkles or bubbles that you may get. Now, even though this is permanent vinyl, it does have some forgiveness where you can lift it back up and replace it. Just be very careful when applying it. So once it's all wrapped around and you've worked all those little pieces out, we're going to take our scissors and we're gonna snip each one of the corners as shown here. Now what this does is allow you to fold in that vinyl to the bottom of the box for a nice neat bottom edge of your box as shown here. Now we will be covering up the bottom, but go ahead and snip around the top edge too and fold that in and look how clean and crisp that is around the top. So now we're gonna take our other half of our vinyl and our larger box, and we're gonna repeat this entire process and cover this one as well. And here are both of our boxes all nice and covered. Now I love to finish the bottoms of my boxes. So what I like to use is this black foam. I get this in large rolls from Joanne when they have a coupon. And so what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna place the bottom of the box on the foam and I'm gonna adhere it with some hot glue. So just run a bead along the bottom of your box and make sure there's a generous amount so it sticks to the foam. And then you wanna just place it carefully on top of the foam and give it just a little bit of pressure so it's bonded. 
Now once that one's bonded, repeat it for the other one, let it sit for a few minutes, and now our boxes are bonded to the foam. Now we can cut it out, so go ahead and grab your cutting mat and utility blade, and then just trim off all of that excess foam on the bottom of your boxes, and what you'll end up having is a nice clean finish to the bottom as shown here. I just love how good that this looks when it's all nice and finished. So now just go ahead and grab your faux leather. Now what I'm gonna do with this is add some tags to my box. So I'm gonna cut a strip about an inch and a half wide for my box, but you could choose any length or size that you like. So I cut a strip long enough where I can make two labels for the front of my box. Now I am gonna grab those lids and place them on top of the box just so I could get the label placement perfect and center. So I'm gonna sit that faux leather strip on top of the box and I'm just kind of gauging how wide I want my label to be, just marking it with a pencil and I'm gonna do this for both of the boxes. And then carefully cut it out with a pair of scissors. And so now we have two labels and I'm kind of doing a test fit here just to make sure everything fits okay. And you could do any additional trimming if you like. Now you can add these on just like this, but what I decided to do is take my acrylic paint pen that I got from Amazon and I wanted to create some stitching around my little um, leather pieces. Now I tried a test piece first, of course, just to make sure it would look okay. And then once that pass passed, I went ahead and um, did ticking marks around both of my little square labels that I'm gonna be placing on my boxes and then let that sit to dry. I'm just kind of just kind of blowing on them and fanning them it dries pretty quickly now once that is dry we can go ahead and place one of those on each one of those boxes Now I'm gonna be adhering these to the box and I'm gonna be using my hot glue. And what I like to do is adhere half of the label at a time. This allows me to kind of work with it just a little bit and do some minor adjusting if I need to. And then you can go ahead and add adhesive to the other side once that first side is in place. And we're just gonna repeat this for our second box. Now what I also decided to do is take some of these gold thumbtacks that I got from the Dollar Tree and I am going to press one into each one of the corners of the box. Now once one is in the corner of the labels, you notice that the ends of it sticks through the box. So I like to take my little wire clippers and I am gonna clip off those sharp ends on the inside, just in case you reach in, you don't wanna get injured or cut. So I'm clipping off those long nails and then I'm going to follow up by covering these up with a dollop of hot glue and it kinda uh, hides that little sharp piece. Now you could have cut these off in the beginning, but poking them through just seemed more easy for me so I went ahead and just left them on and clipped them off later. Now once you add your hot glue to the cut ends on the inside and let that dry that secures that little thumbtack in place and you have this really beautiful accent on the outside of your box. Now here are both of our boxes all complete and I think that they turned out great. So here they are, check it out. How adorable are these boxes? Now I am such a huge fan of Buffalo Check and I'm glad that I decided to use it in this project. Now I do love the pairing of the faux leather and the tacks too. It's such a great combination. Now you could use these as storage boxes but they're great for other decor as well. Now you could just place some holiday greenery inside for a really festive display. Now I just used some holly stems from the Dollar Tree. I folded up the ends and then I added them to the box. Such a simple holiday decor idea. Now of course when the holidays are over you can add any greenery of your choice to decorate your space and I use these faux plants from Ikea. Now these just make the perfect accent to these boxes. Now you all have to let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Listen, I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing these top favorites all in one video and that you all are inspired. Now if you love 
out of the box creations, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Also, make sure that you're following me as She's So Crafty on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Now, be sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and hit that bell to be notified when our next DIY video goes live. It doesn't cost a thing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.